to this message. Lord, we bless and thank you so much for what you've done in our lives and what you will continue to do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so the message is called uh, Nothing is Unfixable or God. Nothing is Too Hard for God to Fix or to Repair. You guys know what the word repair means, right? Repair? Okay, good. I'm, I'll probably use that word. So think about your stuff at home. Have you guys ever broken something at home that was hard to fix and it could not get fixed? Yes? Thumbs up if you've ever broken a toy and it was hard to fix. How many of you have broken something and you got it fixed by somebody? Somebody fixed it. Yeah? Good. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Good. So this message is trying to help us understand that there's nothing impossible for God. God can fix pretty much everything, right? So we're going to read a, a, I'm not going to read the whole passage. I'm going to read some of the passage and I want you guys to think about this. Um, it's about one of God's really favorite almost maybe even his best friend his name was Lazarus what? you guys have heard that name before Lazarus yes. yeah okay so we're gonna hear a little message about Lazarus and then I'll tell you guys most of the story because it's really long and then we'll go from there okay so now a man named Lazarus was sick he was from Bethany the village of Mary and her sister Martha This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is not for God's glory so that, no, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. They were like his best friends. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. And then he said to the disciples, okay, now let's go to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a story, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you're going to go back. So he went, he did what he needed to do. And then after he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So Lazarus was so sick that he died. Okay. He told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. Now let's go to him. So Jesus ends up going to Lazarus. I mean, going to see Lazarus and Lazarus had died because he was very, very sick. He, it was two or three days. He finally got there. And Martha, the sister of Lazarus, was so angry. She said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And then Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you understand? Do you believe this? She said, yes, Lord. So Jesus asked them, where did you lay him? Where is he? And then they took him to Lazarus where he was laying there dead. Jesus once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. He was in a cave with a stone across the entrance. He said, take away that stone. But Lord, Martha said, by this time, there's a bad odor. I'm sure he smells. He's been there for four days. And then Jesus looked at her and said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And then when he had said, Jesus called out a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus came out and his feet wrapped with strips of linen and cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. So basically, 
four days later, Lazarus is dead. They bury him. They put him in a tomb. And Jesus looked at the sister. Well, he showed up and the sisters were angry. And they were like, you could have killed him. If you would have came earlier, he wouldn't have died. And Jesus said, he is not going to be dead forever. I'm going to raise him. Do you believe me? Right? Even in death, there is still life if you believe in me. Right? And so he basically... He didn't intentionally let it happen, but he wanted them to, he wanted to do another miracle, right? At this point, he had already healed the blind. He had worked with someone with leprosy. He wanted to show something so big that people could not deny that he was the way, the truth, and the life, and you have to believe in him and that he could show you miracles. So this is something that was impossible, right? Impossible. So. Do you guys understand when God says, even in death, there is life. Even in death, there is life still, life after death. Do you guys understand what that means? Does anyone want to take a shot at maybe what God is trying to say when he says, this is not final. Even though your body may be dead, but there is still much life after that. Do you guys understand what that means? Anyone want to try? Maya. There is still hope. There's still hope? And why is there hope? What are we hoping? What do we believe in? That God will rescue us. That God will rescue us, that God will um, be our savior in all things. This is, you know, a life that we're living here on land, but we have eternal life with who? With Jesus. Exactly, with Jesus. So <coughs> when, when um, Jesus showed up, and Martha was like, what happened? Where have you been? My brother is sick. Did she have hope? What was her feelings at that time when she was talking to Jesus? What do you think she felt when she saw Jesus? Eden Leonard. She must have been feeling sad that Jesus had to come to like heal her brother. Exactly. She was sad because Jesus didn't come to heal her brother when he was sick. Have you guys ever been around someone who was sick or maybe they broke their leg or broke their arm or something and you're just so sad for them and you're like man I wish something could happen to heal them and it takes time right so Janae um, Yeah, so one of your friends broke her arm at school. And so when people are sick, if they're, you know, broke their arm, broke their foot, they have a cold, what can we do for them? What can we do? We're not Jesus, so we can't heal them. We're not doctors, so we can't heal them. But what can we do to help those people? You right here, what's your name? You raise your hand, what's your name? You want to answer the question? Okay, what's your name? Haven. Haven. Okay. What what can we do when people are sick? We can tell Jesus that our leg got sick, so 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 Jesus can come and heal them. Yeah, we can let them know that we care about them, so Jesus can probably heal them. Matea, what can we do? Okay. We can pray. Exactly. And when we pray, we want to be specific. We want to call out to God. We want to call out and say. Help heal my friend who broke their arm. Heal my mother or my father or my sibling who's sick and they have a cold or their nose is stopped up or they have allergies or something, right? You guys, we have to be in the spirit of praying all the time because we know that we can't do it, right? We can have probably help make things easier for them, maybe give them water, give them medicine, but we're not the ones that can truly, truly heal them, right? We wanna make sure that we're calling on someone who can heal them. So is anything impossible for Jesus? What do you think? No. no. He can do almost pretty much everything. Yeah. We can't. You know, there's this funny saying that you can't, as a human being, you can't lick your own elbow. Have you guys ever heard that before? I can. You can't? Your elbow, not your shoulder. Oh. <laughs> So if you 
try to lift your elbow, they say it's like almost impossible to lift your elbow. Some of you might be really flexible, but it's one of those kind of weird things. The way that God made us is impossible. Yeah, it's hard to do, right? You might get close, but it's hard to do. You're all trying to do it. So, oh, Matea almost did it. Good. But it's hard, right? It's impossible. Some things are really, really hard. Right. So what we want to do is always, so we want to always be mindful that whatever seems impossible for us is not impossible for God. How do you think that the people were feeling when he walked up to the tomb and said, move the tomb. He's been in there four days. I want to see what's going on. I want to go see my friend. What do you think the people thought when that was happening? What's your name? They were surprised. Surprised? And what else? And they were like, why did he ask to open the tomb if he died for four days ago? I know, right? They were like, it's going to smell. That's what Martha said. She was like, I'm not opening that. He's going to smell. He's been dead. That's not good. And Jesus was like, do you believe me or not? So you ha he's constantly going to be testing you, right? We say that we believe him. We say that nothing's impossible for him. And she had just said... Like five minutes ago, yes, I know God's going to give you what you need. I believe in you. And then right then and there, she doubted a little bit. She was like, oh, my God, I don't know. I don't know if you should do this, right? So we have to constantly be reminded that we believe, right? And we believe in him. So with that being said, if you guys are in a um, situation and it seems impossible, right, what are some things that you guys are going to do to make sure that you you show God that you believe that he can get you through that tough time? What are some things that you guys are going to do? What is, what like, how you're going to feel, what you're going to say, what you're going to do? Eat it. to believe what? What are we going to believe when we're praying as well? Like we're praying to him and we're asking him to help us. What are we going to believe? Is your hand up? Yes. yes. Okay. What are we going to believe? That he's going to heal someone if they're sick. Gina, what are we going to believe? Believe God. Believe in God. And, and what are we going to believe in? God is what? God Joseph. Mighty. God is mighty. Absolutely. God is mighty haven. What else are we going to believe? Yeah. So when we know, and we might have experienced this, we might have had family members who have died and who have, uh, you know, we're no longer with us here on earth, and that's very, very sad. We all may experience that at some point. I've certainly experienced that as an adult. But my hope is that they believed in God, right, and that they have eternal life with God. So I am sad, and I miss them in the physical sense, but I'm also very happy, and I believe that if they believed in God, that they are not suffering anymore and that they are with him and that they are having eternal life with God. Do you guys believe that? Yeah. That's why we, we believe in Jesus Christ, right? Because he gives us eternal life, right? Do you guys know what eternal life means? No. He didn't know well. You live forever with Jesus. With Jesus. That's the key. You gotta have Jesus. You gotta believe in Jesus. He has to be in your heart. Right? We have to we have to make sure that he is our savior, that we profess that he is our savior. Right? Okay. All right, I'm gonna close this out. Any questions about this story about God? Not nothing being too impossible. And the reason this story was used for this message is because a lot of times death is final to a lot of people. That's like the biggest ultimate thing to come back from, right? And so this is a really good illustration that nothing is impossible for God, right? Nothing, even death, which is sometimes the most final state for a lot of people. You guys understand why we use this story? 
Yes? You understand that? Okay, questions after, okay? So let's close out in prayer. Heavenly Father, <coughs> wait, hold on, sorry. Before we pray, let's go over the memory verse. I'm sorry. And it's actually up here. I'm going to turn it. It says, the memory verse is, heal the sick, bring the dead back to life, heal the people who have leprosy. Matthew 10, 8a, okay? So we're going to close out in prayer. And everyone bow your heads, please. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your message today. Thank you for reminding us that nothing is too grand for you to, to manage and to get us through, Lord. We thank you for your healing powers. We thank you for, you know, always coming through for us in times of need and in our darkest hour and in times where it may seem impossible for us to fix, but we know that ultimately you are the ultimate repair person, Lord. Thank you so much for living in our hearts and our mind, Lord. We believe in you, we have hope in you, and we know that even in death, we have eternal life with you, Lord. We thank you so much for the children in the room and online listening today. Thank you for your message. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.